Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Joel Myers, and welcome to the Los Angeles County Fairgrounds in Pomona. It has been nine grueling months, 18 races all over the country, and it culminates today with the Winston Finals. The big story unfolding is in the top fuel division, where the champion, Gary Ormsby, is trying to hold off the challenger, Joe Amato. In the funny car division, it's already been wrapped up. John Force winning the season-long series. The pro stocks, though, as wide open as ever. Any one of five drivers could take the top honors. But back to that big story in the top fuel division. And with more on that story and the showdown that's developing right now, let's go to Steve Evans. Joel, I think every drag racing fan in the Golden State is here at Pomona today. Because nobody wants to miss the championship final race for the top fuel category between the two best drivers of the year gary ormsby and joe amato in the two best cars of the year nobody would deny that and maybe the two best crew chiefs in the sport for joe amato there's tim richards amato calls him the general because he's always in charge and that's the man that wrenched amato to the title just two years ago in 1988 for gary ormsby well there's quiet studied and very dapper lee beard a true student of the sport he wrenched ormsby to that same title just one year ago right here in pomona now consider this you talk about even over 18 races in nine months both drivers have won 43 rounds of competition it's a tie but amato came into this event with a 254 point lead because he's been to the final a few more times than ormsby except in qualifying it was gary ormsby setting low elapsed time at 5.01 50 bonus points he out qualified amato by two positions four bonus points so now it's 200. That means that Ormsby only has to go one more round than Amato to take the crown. Now, they both survived first-round competition earlier today, but in round number two, they each meet a giant in the sport, either of which could upset this very delicate apple cart. For more on that, here is three-time top fuel champ, Big Daddy Don Garland. Well, Steve, Eddie Hill just ran a stellar 508, the best for him in many races, and the driver of this car, Don Perdome. He won his round with a 511, his very best since he entered top fuel this year. Now, we take a look at the ladder, we see the problem is Joe Amato faces Eddie Hill, and Gary Ormsby faces Don Perdome. They must get by these two competitors if they are to continue this championship duel. Now, if they do, they could conceivably face each other in the final round to decide the overall winner. Joe Amato getting ready with his wife, Jerry, alongside. Nice touch to Eddie Hill's crew chief, Fuzzy Carter, coming in. Well, Joe, I think that says no matter the outcome, there will be no hard feelings. But the pressure is really on that man, Gary Ormsby, more than it is Amato. Amato has that little points lead. If Ormsby loses in this round, his season is done with. Now, we started with 16 cars in eliminations this morning. Round one completed. That has been carved in half down to eight. Before we see Ormsby or Amato, well, there's some other business here. In the far lane is Gene Snow and his 4,000 horsepower, 300-inch long top fuel dragster. He'll be up against this young man, and I mean young, at 22. Tommy Johnson Jr. is the youngest driver in the top fuel category. Tommy is from Ottumwa, Iowa, and beat 87 Winston champ Dick LaHaye in round number one. Now, Gene Snow is 52 years old from Fort Worth, Texas, and there's no predicting Gene Snow. He could be the slowest car in the event and suddenly, within one round of racing, be the quickest. He tries an awful lot of different things. It is Gene Snow in the far lane. We're ready to go. Tommy Johnson Jr. in the near lane. A good start by both. But it is Gene Snow, the veteran. A clean car length win, 5.21, 280 miles per hour. That is not particularly quick on this day, Don Gurley. No, it's not, Steve. Gene seems to be a full tenth of a second off the pace. Joe Amato getting ready for his second race of the day. And don't forget, he wants to beat that fastest elapsed time of Gary Ormsby and pick up that extra 50 points. That's right. If he can run better than 501, he not only earns himself 50 points, more importantly, he takes them away from Ormsby and makes Ormsby go one round further in eliminations to win the crown. But of course, Eddie Hill may have something to say about this whole deal. Good point, Steve, as we see Joe Amato gaining traction in his pre-race drill. Amato, the two-time Winston champion. And Joe Amato knows the experience of Eddie Hill could completely knock him out of the competition. Steve Evans talked with Eddie. Eddie, you could ruin not only Joe Amato's day, but his whole year. Yeah, we've already thought about that. Uh, I'd really like to see him win the championship, you know, but, uh, and he's a friend of mine, but we want to win this race, so we kind of got a little conflict there. What we're going to try to do is put him out. I like his.
his attitude, buddies, but not when they're next to each other. And Don Garlitz, they face a very tricky racetrack. It's almost 90 degrees today, the sun beating down on it. That's not a good combination. No, it's not. A crew chief could certainly make a miscalculation on the clutch, and everything would go up in smoke. I guarantee you one thing. Gary Ornsby and Lee Beer's favorite color right now is yellow. They are rooting for Eddie Hill with everything they have. In the round of eight, we'll find out if he stays in the competition. This is NBC's Sports World, and today it's brought to you by Goodyear Eagle Radios, the best-selling performance radios in the world. By Ford and your Ford dealer. Have you driven a Ford lately? By Fram Oil Filters. Fram, you can pay a little now or a lot later. And by Haviland Superior Grade Motor Oil. Get the most out of your car. Into the NHRA Winston Finals in Pomona, California is Gary Ormsby. The bar lane gets ready for his second race of the day. Just before we broke away, we saw Joe Amato take care of Eddie Hill. Quick time, but not quick enough. With more on that story, let's go to Steve Evans as he talks to Joe Amato. Well, Joe, you completed half of the mission. The 502 takes the win, but doesn't take that 50 points away from Gary Ormsby. It's tough in the heat to try and run, you know, to get the 501 with or something. We're just, we're a heartbeat away. The, the whole weekend's been a thousandth of a way all weekend. I just hope it doesn't come back to haunt me. All right, Gary. Ormsby now faces that tricky racetrack. So he is only a heartbeat away. Oh, so close to that quickest elapsed time, which belongs to the man we're looking at right now, Gary Ormsby. He would like to even improve on that time to make it tougher for someone to take it away. But on this racetrack, I just don't think in this heat that that's possible. Ormsby from Auburn, California, a very successful car dealer who's been drag racing since his teenage years. He'll be up against Don Perdom. I asked Don earlier how he's approaching this role as a spoiler. I like to I like to be a thorn in his side on this uh, this next round, to tell you the truth. And, uh, you know, we've been kind of going back and forth all year, and I just like to step up and do one. It's been a tough year, Don Garlitz, for Snake for Dome, but he has really put together some consistent times leading up to this matchup. That 5-11 ET in the first round is the best that he has had this year. Ormsby away first. Perdome cannot gun him down. Ormsby, 5.12 seconds, but a big speed of 283 miles per hour. Now, Joe Amato did not get the help he wanted from Don Perdome, but the good news for Joe is Ormsby's 5.12 is a tenth of a second slower than Joe's performance in the same lane in the same round. So the car is slowing down as we're looking right now in the car of Kenny Bernstein. And he'll be going up against 25-year-old Lori John, Corpus Christi, Texas. And like Don Brudeau, Kenny Bernstein making the move this year from funny cars to top fuel. Not a successful move. Let's go down to Steve Evans for an update on Gary Ormsby. Well, Gary, you darn near saw your championship hopes go right out the window. That was quite a drag race. Yeah. Because, uh, you know, Steve, I can't see him unless they're in front of me. He never was in front of me, but I guess it was pretty close. Yeah. You're 512. This car is not performing the way you and Lee Beard want it to. No, it really hasn't. We've been stumbling since the last couple of runs yesterday, and it hasn't run well all at all today or the first round or this round either. You need to protect that 501 yourself, those 50 points. For sure. That's a lot. 50 points is a, a ton right now. And let's remind you, those 50 points could spell the difference in the overall season-long championship. There is Dale Armstrong, the crew chief for Kenny Bernstein, and it's been a very difficult year for he and Kenny. They're so used to dominating four funny car titles. They came into top fuel, really honestly thought it would be a piece of cake. They have gone winless all season long. The scenario has been exactly the same for he and Don Perdome. Lori Johns, she's had a thrilling year. Not only did she win the Winter Nationals, but two additional national events. And at one point, she even led the Winston point standings, Don Garland. But Steve, the story here is Kenny Bernstein. He and Dale Armstrong have looked better and ran better today than I have seen them all year long. He is a potential winner here all the way to the finals. And he is powering away from Lori Johns. Seconds. That tells us that there is nothing wrong with this near lane despite the tire smoke from Eddie Hill. 
So we've concluded round two as Joe Amato is being wheeled back to the pits. And it brings us to the semifinal confrontations. As Joe Amato will go up against Gene Snow. Amato with a lane choice by virtue of a quicker elapsed time. And the other semifinal, Gary Orsby, going up against Kenny Bernstein. Bernstein has the lane choice with a quicker elapsed time. You know, Joel, that could be trouble for Gary Ormsby. Well, now it's time to shift gears quite literally into the pro stock category, which has been the most competitive of any of the classifications in the National Hot Rod Association this year. In fact, coming into the Winston Finals, five drivers had a shot at the title. Daryl Alderman leading in the only Dodge in the sport, followed by the Pontiac of Jerry Ekman, the Oldsmobile of Larry Morgan, Warren Johnson, likewise in an Oldsmobile, and with an outside shot, the perennial champion in the category, Bob Glidden, in his sport. Here in the second round of Pro Stock, we're about to see Ricky Smith up against Don Beverly. Ricky Smith from King, North Carolina, has never won a national event, but he's come so very close. Now, Don Beverly only has one national event to his credit, but brought a big club to Pomona and used it earlier today in round number one when he met up with points contender Warren Johnson. Warren Johnson in the near lane and Don Beverly in the far lane. One of the best races we saw today. Warren takes a slight starting line advantage, not very much, but just puts the car out in front of Beverly a small amount. Now, as they go down course, Beverly's power makes up the difference, and the cars run side by side for almost the entire quarter mile. And as they near the finish line, you fans will be able to see what one thousandth of a second looks like. So the role of the spoiler in the Pro Stock Division belonging to Don Beverly. So he gets ready for his matchup now with Ricky Smith in the far lane. They'll leave the starting line at about 8,000 RPM. Ricky Smith has problems, has to shut down his automobile, and Don Beverly advances to the semifinals. What a surprise this car has been. Glidden is now one of the four that is still in contention for the season-long title. Glidden trying to win his 11th championship and his sixth straight. One of four is still in contention. If he's to pull that off, though, he needs Alderman, Ekman, and Morgan to all fall this round. His competition will be Bruce Allen and the Chevrolet Beretta. And for Allen, it's been, well, quite a disappointing year. The Raren Morrison team used to winning more than one race, and that's all they scored, the North Star Nationals. For Bob Glidden of Whiteland, Indiana, well, it's a disappointing season if he doesn't win all of the NHRA events, but he only got two in 1990. Remember, these men are driving 2,350-pound race cars, 500 cubic inch engines, carburetors with gasoline, but they leave the starting line almost as hard as a top fuel dragster. In the near lane is the Ford Probe of Glidden, the far lane, the Beretta Chevrolet product of Bruce Allen. Allen with problems off the start. And we ride to victory with Bob Glidden as he pulls the transmission into high gear across the strike. His son Rusty says, yes, Dad, why didn't we do that all year? A 732 at 189 miles per hour. So Bob Glidden makes his way to the semifinals, and we'll be right back to Pomona. NHRA Winston Finals continue in Pomona, California. Welcome back once again. Joel Myers along with Steve Evans. Don Garlitz, things working well right now in the pits of Gary Ormsby. Well, they're disassembling that engine. They are trying desperately to find that tenth of a second that has eluded them today. While over on the Amato pits, they're just mechanically going through it, methodically checking everything. They don't want to lose any performance. So the showdown continues in the top fuel division. That will be coming up, and right now, back to the pros' stocks. The matchup between Tony Christian and Larry Morgan. And, Joel, as you well remember, Larry Morgan is one of those five drivers coming in who had a chance to win the championship. Now, Tony Christian, his opponent in the yellow car, he's out here just having a good time and hoping to win the $30,000 event prize. Larry Morgan, well, his hopes for a $100,000 Winston championship and that Oldsmobile in the far lane are still alive. They're not jumping up and down, but they are alive. Morgan has won four national events this year with really sheer horsepower. Now, Larry Morgan won't take Tony Christian easy. Even though Christian was away from the sport a year and a half at the last event two weeks ago in Dallas, Texas, he came back out of his Sarasota, Florida home and won the event. Well, that was quite a feat for a guy who hadn't been in the cockpit in a long, long time. Talk about your sport. Points chase, 736 to a 741. Morgan's season is done. Tony Christian in the near lane. Larry Morgan. 
him in the far lane. Watch that starting line advantage by Tony Christian. He wasn't impressed by all the guys running for the points. He came to get the money, and it looks like his power is going to pay off. Watch him continually drive away from Larry Morgan as they reach the end of the drag trip to take a very decisive win. And it has to be disappointing for Larry Morgan. Well, Larry, it's been a long season, but for you, it's finally over. You have to settle for less than number one. <laughs> well, what can I say? We've had a good year. It could have been a lot worse, but we've had an awful good year. <laughs> Both of these guys have. I told you, Randy, he was really cocky for a little fat guy. <laughs> Johnny Christian, who just won this last round, great job. Larry. Go start that, your father. You, there's a lot of handshaking going on down here, but up at the starting line, if Daryl Alderman wins this race, we'll see a real celebration. And that's because, Steve, you're absolutely right. He can win it all. The season-long competition with a win right here over Jerry Ekman. And that's because Larry Morgan is out, Warren Johnson is out, Bob Glidden is running out of time and rounds to catch Alderman. Jerry Ekman, if he could beat that Dodge in the near lane, the red and white car, and go on and win the entire event, could take the championship. Let's remember, Ekman won here at the Winter Nationals, the opening race of the year. And he's definitely running well enough today to upset Daryl Alderman. Alderman with four wins to his credit, the only Dodge in the sport, and it's a shorter wheelbase car than the others. That means it can be more difficult to drive. Alderman fidgeting with that hand. The championship is on the line if you can defeat the yellow car, the Pontiac of Jerry Ekman. Daryl Alderman is the 1990 Winston Pro Stock Champion. The most competitive season ever is over. Daryl Alderman's Dodge near lane, Jerry Ekman's Pontiac far lane. Alderman wanted this championship. Watch him take a starting line advantage right off the bat. Now, Jerry Ekman's Pontiac was making good power, but it wasn't up to the power that the Alderman's Dodge had. Watch him as they move down track as he continues to gain on him. At the three-quarter mark, Daryl makes his move and puts the car completely out in front of Jerry Ekman to take the win. Let's go to Steve Evans. His fingers shaking, as I'm sure anybody's would, that just won their first Winston championship. The helmet off, the body out of the Dodge. Congratulations. Bob Glidden is here. Larry Morgan, Tony Christian, a celebration of Pro Stock competitors. Daryl. Hey, I don't know what to say. Maybe I can get some sleep now, Steve. <laughs> and here's a check for $100,000. Bobby Masson of RJR, Daryl Alderman. Boy, that was quite a final race to end it. I knew it was going to be a, a good a good race between Jerry and I because it always is. Every, every run we've made has been just a couple thousands, you know, determined the winner. Everybody says you're so calm. I've watched you all weekend. You've been fidgeting around. You couldn't keep your feet still. Oh, gosh, Steve. Don't believe that stuff. I've, I've been more nervous than I've ever been in my life. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I saw. Okay, Steve, let's not forget we still have the semifinals coming up at the Pro Stock Division. That is the new champion, Daryl Alderman, against Tony Christian. The other pairing, Bob Glidden against Don Beverly. Glidden has the lane choice in that matchup. Beautiful day in Pomona, California as we head back to the pits. And there's Jerry Amato mixing fuel right now for her husband, Joe, as he gets set to the semifinals and his confrontation with Gene Snow. Over in the Ormsby camp, there's Susie Hoops, Gary's girlfriend. It may look relaxed, but believe me, the pressure is there on Gary Ormsby and his counterpart, Joe Amato. One for whom the pressure is off is this man, John Force, 1990 Winston Funny Car Champion. It's been a season of celebration for the man known as Bruce. All too often marred by the specter of a funny car driver's worst fear, fire. Seven times, John has tasted victory. And each time, he shared his success with his crew, headed by the legendary crew chief, Austin Coyle. Through all the fires, countless miles on the road, and 18 national events, the team maintained their direction while leading the points chase for most of the year. Here in Pomona, all that remained was to qualify, and the title would be his. That done, he turned his attention to this race. And in round one, the unbelievable happened. Force fouled out of competition against Tim Gross. The red line on the right means John left too soon. 
soon after, back in the pits, Steve found Force doing what he does best, being, well, John Force. John Force, the season's over. What are you doing? Well, come out here and greet the fans. They won a world champ. They earned it. celebrating his first ever Winston Funny Car title. We move now into the semifinals in the Funny Car division. The man we're looking at right now had that same kind of feeling that John Force is experiencing. That Bruce Larson, he won it last year. That's right. He not only won the championship, but this very event beating John Force in the final round. But this year, the Larson has not won a single race. That can't be said for this man. Chuck Etchells has had the finest year ever for he and his team. In fact, he won his first championship event. We saw that on NBC Sports, the Summer Nationals in Englishtown, New Jersey. Etchells will be in the near lane. Bruce Larson's biggest thrill in this sport, other than winning the championship last year, was when the Smithsonian Institution in Washington, D.C. asked to have his 89 championship car for a permanent display. That was a very proud moment for the sport, Don Garlitz. Well, Larson would really like to win this race. You know, he hasn't had a win all year, and he feels bad about that, being the champion from last year. And he's up for it. He's running good now. loses traction. Larson goes to the final round. And we'll be right back to Pomona, California. More Winston Finals. And Don, he gave John Force all he wanted all year long to finish number two in the season-long point standing. Matching up now with Tim Gross in the semifinal race. And Tim Gross, the young man that John Force redlined against in the very first round. Well, Bruce Larson's party in the finals. Let's check in now with Steve Evans. You've always had, a, well, a real way with this racetrack. Uh, Maynard really knows what to do on this racetrack, and he took a good guess at that last one. We didn't want to give anything up, but I had to do a little bit of driving, so he'll know what to do next round. Absolutely. Maynard Yanks, the crew chief on the car. Tim Gross trying to back up in the black marks that he's just laid down in the burnout. Doesn't look like he's, uh, the crew, crew man is too happy with the way he's backing up. Looks like he's trying to change him around there a little bit. Well, Don, as you well know, if you don't wind the car up in those black tracks you laid down in the burnout, the burnout was a wasted effort. You're not going to get the kind of traction you need. Tim Gross is driving a rather old race car with a shiny new body on it. He came out here really to evaluate his engine combination for next year and finds himself in the semifinals. And after beating John Force, Tim went over and asked to borrow a set of tires, and Force said, sure, just roll them away. Take anything you want. Ed McCulley's won four events this year, the highlight being his fifth U.S. Nationals crown. No one has won that huge event more than Ed McCullough. Well, I don't think Tim Gross has got a chance against Ed McCullough. I think he'll smoke the tires. It looked to me like he's lined up crooked on the starting line. Well, we're about to find out as they complete the staging process, gently nudging those cars into a pair of electronic beams. They are just about set. And Big Daddy, you called it. Well, that was an easy one, Steve. Ed McCullough powers his way into the final round, and the way Tim Gross abused those tires, John Forrest may not even want them back. McCullough right now has got to be thinking, had I won one more round anywhere over the last nine months, it might be me, the Winston champ, instead of John Forrest. So Tim Gross is gone, and we have our final pairing now in the funny car division. It'll be Ed McCullough and Bruce Larson. Larson with the lane choice with a quicker elapsed time. The top fuel division showdown developing. We're getting ready for the semifinals. They're towing Joe Amato's car through the pits now. He gets ready for his matchup against Gene Snow. But the one Amato is most worried about is the gentleman we're looking at right now, Gary Ormsby. He'll be taking on Kenny Bernstein. And as uh, Gary Ormsby puts on his fire suit and helmet, you can bet the big thought on his mind is that 5'11 that Bernstein cranked out in that round before and got lane choice. There's the new Pro Stock champion, Daryl Alderman, winning the season-long series. He's getting ready now for his semifinal against Tony Christian. But before we see that race, funny car finalist Ed McCullough now is with Steve Evans. A 541. Yeah, that's okay. We didn't uh, we didn't want to beat ourselves that round. Uh, I think by the final round, lane choice is not going to be a consideration, and uh, I'll go wherever Bruce wants me to go, and we'll be there. Okay, thanks. Ed McCullough.
Calus never won this event. He did win the Winter Nationals, though, on this very same track back in 1972. Back to the Pro Stock Division now. It's the semifinals. Daryl Alderman and Tony Christian. We're looking at the car of Tony Christian, the Chevrolet Beretta, as I said earlier, won just two weeks ago, so he's got the hot hand. The new Pro Stock champ, Daryl Alderman, came to drag racing from the world of motorcycle hill climbing, where he rode Nitro Harleys, and if you can get one of those things to the top of Old Smokey, you ought to be able to do this, Big Daddy. Well, I'll tell you, it seems to me like he came and did something safe. I wouldn't want any part of that hill climbing Nitro bikes. All right, Tony Christian, the yellow car, the red and white car, Daryl Alderman. Now in the Pro Stock Division, we're looking at the car of Bob Glidden, who for the first time over the last six years will not be the winner in the season-long point standings championship series. He'll be going up against Don Beverly, without a doubt, the biggest surprise so far in the Pro Stock Division. And don't forget, he's the one who knocked out Warren Johnson in round one. Let's check in with Steve Evans. You know, Daryl, no sooner do you win the Winston Championship and you get humbled by Tony Christian. Great job, Tony, first. Thank you. Felt good. I was the first one to beat the new world champion. Believe me, these guys deserve it. They ran great. He only beat you by a hundredth of a second. Yeah, I wish he'd stayed in Florida, Steve. <laughs> a lot of people are saying that after Tony Christian won in Dallas and might win again here today. Good luck to you, Tony. Thank you. A big, big moment in the career of Tony Christian. Don Beverly trying to pull up another surprise going up against Bob Glidden. Now, Bob Glidden, if he can put away Beverly, will achieve the number two spot in Pro Stock and a $50,000 cash bonus. But he's got to get around the surprising Beverly. Glidden was off the starting line first and reached the finish line first at 735, 188 miles per hour. He goes to the final round. So the Pro Stock final pairing has been determined now. It's going to be Bob Glidden taking on Tony Christian. And don't forget, Christian, the biggest surprise in that division, has the lane choice. When we come back to Pomona, it is going to be the top fuel duel. Ormsby, Amato, and the semifinals after these messages from your local station. Joel Myers along with Steve Evans and Don Garlitz. We're looking at Joe Amato getting ready for the semifinals in the top fuel. And from where he sits in that car, he can see Gary Ormsby and Kenny Bernstein getting ready to stage. He is so nervous. He's like a cat inside that cockpit, Don Garland. Yes, he is. He is saying, Bernstein, if you ever did anything right in your life, it's time. Oh, absolutely, because if Gary Ormsby should fall to the red car of Kenny Bernstein, this championship chase is over. The title, the money, the glory belongs to Joe Amato. All things have been equal pretty much during the day for both Amato and Gary Ormsby. Ormsby here does not have lane choice. Is that a big deal, Don? It could be. It means to him that there's a car sitting in the other lane that could possibly outperform him. It did in the previous round. Here we go. Ormsby lowers his shield. Bernstein is set. The most interested spectator among the 40,000 here will be Joe Amato. Lee Beard loves what he sees. Tim Richards, he hates it. Gary Ormsby goes to the final round at 5.02. Let's go to Don Garlitz on the starting line. That's a little better. Well, we're tuning it up to race the big guy in the final. If we get a shot at him, we're going to throw everything we can. There's a lot of money at stake. Our fans have been supporting us all year long. There's, I cannot stress to you how important it is for me to win the world championship. The crew chief, Lee Beard. Gary Ormsby on his way to the finals. Gary Ormsby in the near lane. Bernstein in the far lane. Watch the starting line advantage on Bernstein. He is doing the best we've seen this year. But the Lee Beard prepared engine began to reel Bernstein in as they got the half track. And by the time they got to the end, the 502 had done the job. And now the pressure shifts to Joe Amato. Not only does Gary Ormsby, without lane choice, beat Kenny Bernstein to gain a final round berth, you picked up your performance to run with Amato. 502, the same numbers he's been running all day. Yeah, Steve, we made a big, big move there, and it worked for us, looks like. But I guess it was in the clutch? Yes, you're right. You're absolutely right. He was out on you a little bit. Bernstein may be the best lever in this sport. Yeah, he did get on me. I didn't want to take any chances. I'm not making excuses, but and I just wasn't really on up there. I did not want to lose by red light or, you know, some other way by just actually winning. Uh, would you like to? 
know what happens on the finish on the starting line right now? Oh, yeah. Maybe we better go and watch, huh? So now Gary Ormsby is turning his attention to the top of the racetrack, the starting line. For the next matchup in the semifinals, Gene Stowe and Joe Amato. Will Amato hold up his end of the deal? Well, Joe Amato wants to do two things. He wants to win this round so that he can get to Ormsby in the final, but he would also like to set low ET so that he will own the 50 points instead of them belonging to Ormsby at the present time. Now, Gene Snell has not been in the same performance league as Amato and Ormsby all day long, but that doesn't mean anything with that particular team. They are capable of going from 550s to 490s in one run. We've seen them do it often over the years. Amato in the far lane, Snow in the near lane. Amato has got to win to keep pace. It all depends on the track and the tires for Gene Snow. If the tires will hold, he could do it. Absolutely, he could be a contender. Oh, Snow was right there, but it's a motto into the final round. Gary Hornsby, the Iceman, does not even react. A 5.03 for a motto, 280 miles per hour. Down on the starting line is Don Garlitz to talk to the winning crew chief, Tim Richards. Well, it fell off just a tad. Yeah, we weren't really leaning on it too hard. Uh, I didn't want to lose, lose lane choice there, but I didn't expect the Ormsby to go that 502 either, but we'll see in the final. This track will be a lot better, I think, then. So it is all set up now. Thank you, Tim Richards, Joe Amato, and Gary Ormsby by virtue of that victory we just saw. We take another look, Don. Gene Snow in the near lane, Amato in the far lane. And again, we see the challenger take a starting line advantage over Amato. Gene Snow looked like he wanted to beat him, but Amato's power produced by Tim Richards was just too much. Look at that car march in the middle of the track, completely overpowering Gene Snow's with a 280 mile an hour top speed to Gene Snow's 266, a decisive victory. And the pressure continues to build. Kenny Bernstein uh, more or less apologizing to Joe Amato for not taking care of Gary Ormsby. The whole season comes down to one race. That's called pressure, buddy. I mean, you wanted a four-second run, you got a 503. That means I lost lane choice, too. That's, That's right. Pretty important right here. I mean, but thank God the sun's going down on Parker Avenue, and by the time we get the run, it'll be two lanes will be good, I hope. And boy, the whole season, 19 races, come down to world champion, over a quarter million dollars on the line. I don't know. That's a lot of pressure. We can't wait. I know. The fans are getting it. The TV people are getting it. I don't know if I like it so much, but that's what racing's all about. Absolutely. Parker Avenue, the name of this drag strip after the former police chief of the city of Pomona. We now have our final pairing in the top fuel division. Joe Amato and Gary Ormsby. So after an entire season of racing, it comes down to this. So much at stake. All up for grabs at Ormsby with the lane choice. So we now have our final set in the top fuel, also in the funny car. And coming up next, it's the finals in the pro stop, featuring Tony Christian against the Bob Glidden team. And what a team. It's comprised of Bob's wife, Etta. There's his grandson, Brandon. And the young man of the car, Rusty, Brandon's father. Late, the moon makes its first appearance as we get ready now for the finals in the top fuel, the funny cars. But first, it is going to be the finals in the pro stock division. And we go to the starting line now with Bob Glidden getting ready. And this will be an interesting matchup. Ford versus Chevrolet. Glidden versus Tony Christian, the upset-minded driver all day long. And Glidden, the, the consummate racer. That's all he thinks about. That's all the family lives for is drag racing. Tony Christian, he's kind of a devil-may-care, fun-loving guy. He loves to come over between rounds and really needle Glidden. And he has beaten Glidden on several occasions head-to-head. -head. Bob Glidden knows that that yellow car in the other lane may well be the toughest competition that he has faced all day. Tony Christian, Bob Glidden, the Pro Stock final round at the Winston Finals. And it is Bob Glidden. His son Rusty reacts as if they'd never won a drag race before. Glidden won this one, Don Garlitz, on sheer starting line reaction time. He certainly did, Steve. As we watched Bob Glidden in the near lane and Tony Christian in the far lane, Glidden would not be denied. What a starting line advantage he took, and we call it a hole shot. And that's what Christian got put on him, a hole shot. And even though he ran a beautiful 730, the 733 of Bob Glidden was good enough to hold him off. 
And down that hole shot was the difference in the race because Glidden had a better reaction time, but a slower elapsed time in the overall race. Steve is with the winner. Bob, I know you won't carry the number one next year, but you still are so proud to be a part of this whole thing. Hey, you know, we've been number one for four or five years in a row. Uh, I, I'm just tickled to death that we're going to be number two. You know, we beat out right. some great, great cars. Ekman, uh, Morgan, Johnson, and, you know, on down to Ricky Smith. You know, I think he's sixth. This guy was only around two races. He won one, was runner-up at the other. I'm tickled to death, Steve. See you next year. Hey, I'll be here. For you sure. too, Tony. All right, bye-bye. Now, the funny car division, there's Larry Miner, the owner of Ed McCullough's car, praying, hoping for some good luck. Well, both Larry and Ed are Southern Californians, but they have not won in this racetrack in 18 years, and they have never won this particular event. Over in the far lane, that's Bruce Larson. Maynard Yates making some last-minute adjustments on that car, Don Garland. Yes, he is. I think it's just a routine adjustment he does every run, though, Steve. Let's remember now that Larson has lane choice and has taken that far lane as most drivers have. So, Tim Richards and Joe Amato will be very interested in seeing how McCullough's car performs in the opposite lane, probably where Ornsby will put them. As Gary slips on his fire suit, he too will be watching this funny car finale with great interest. Lee Beard in a world of his own. Lane choice so critical as we get ready now for the funny car finals at McCullough in the near lane. Larson to the far side. It is Ed McCullough winning at Pomona for the first time in 18 years, winning his first ever Winston Finals title. And in the twilight, you can see the long nitro flames licking at those fiberglass bodies. McCullough near lane, Larson far lane. Race, took a nice starting line advantage and moved right out in front of Larson. And I doubt seriously, even though if Larson had not smoked the tires, he could have overcome that much of a starting line loss. So McCullough becomes our Winston Finals champion. Let's join Steve Evans. Well, when the car owner and the driver both live within an hour of the racetrack, it's always fun to win at home, Ace. <laughs> Boy, is this home, Steve. I mean, we've got so many friends and relatives and family and people here. You know, I'm really glad to win at home. I mean, it's been a long time since we've won here. Uh, you know, just for, for Larry, for Miller, I mean, this is our last race with them, and I'm glad that we can go out winning for them. It's been a very good relation. I've enjoyed being with Miller, but things go on, and we're going on. We'll see you next year, though. Oh, we'll be back next year. You don't worry about that one. So Ed McCullough, the winner of the funny car division at Pomona. We move back to the starting line now. This is a strange move. Lee Beard has called for a lane change. Yeah, Joel, I can't believe this is happening. Lee Beard, just because a little smoke came off of Larson's car, is giving up the far lane. It's been the best lane all day long. This is just what Amato wants. This has got to be considered a shocking development as we get ready for the top fuel final. So after 19 races, nine long months, it all boils down to one race. And we'll be right back with that even sweeter when it comes at home and that's the situation for ed mccullough and larry miners the <laughs> they are right here in their own backyard Good job, guys. the sun is beginning to set right now in the 1990 race season but one big showdown remains this is simply unbelievable both gary ornsby and joe amato have been down the track 46 times this year but now this is the only one that matters the final at the winston finals Steve, when you consider all the bonuses that are involved and the season-long championship prize money, there is better than a quarter of a million dollars at stake on this one race. And we just saw the look of concern on both of the crew chief's faces. Everybody who bought a ticket to this event is still here. And, of course, Gary Ornsby's girlfriend, Susie Hoops, she's holding her breath. Well, they say, Steve, you're only good as your last round. If we look at that, we got to say that Orms, he's got an advantage. 502 to 503 for Amato. 
And Stephen Don, let's not forget, the far lane today has seen a great deal of success, but Lee Beard, the crew chief for Gary Ormsby, who had a lane choice, decided to go with the near lane. That could be the determining factor. Yeah, it may not be the last race that you run that was so important, but that last decision that you made, and you want a bizarre twist, Gary Ormsby could win this race and still lose the championship. Susie Hoops knows this. If Joe Amato sets low ET quicker than 501, no matter whether he gets to the finish line first or not, he will win the money in the title. Incredible. Free stage. trying to get that reaction time, that jump. And what a parting shot by Joe Amato. The quickest time of the entire event, 4.93 seconds. As we watch the replay, we see it's obvious. Look at the flames come up on Orsby. He was an hour and a half early. His brain completely faded away at the stress of the championship. With that one mistake, he lost everything. Let's watch it again. Orsby is on your left. the most dejected man in Pomona, California, Gary Ormsby, who failed to defend his championship. Down to the new champ, now Joe Amato. In the most drama back top fuel final in the history of drag racing, Joe Amato has won his third Winston crown. Speechless. I guess now we can say Joe knows drag racing, buddy. <laughs> With that 493, Ormsby could have gotten the win like you'd still be the champion. Well. What can I say, Steve? You know, that was a lot of pressure and tension for the whole week, but we were trying to win the race, the whole enchilada. The, you know, but Gary, the cars, been there, you know, they stepped up the last round. My team did an outstanding job this week, and boy, they came through under pressure. Every one of them, Tim Richards, Jim Waltz, my wife, Jerry, Wayne Cannon, Dick Moore, Jeff Rogers, I mean, all of them. Oh, God. And as important almost being, well, along with Don Garlis and Shirley Muldowney, the only driver to have won three. That puts me in a special class to be with Don Garlis, Shirley Muldowney. I can't even say my name. No, Joe Otto, a three-time world champion. You know, to, plus, to win the championship for Team Valvoline, Keystone, all the guys at the warehouse, you know, they'll, they'll be off my case a little bit. If I lost, it would have made a tough winner. But, boy, my team, they came through in the clear. Let's celebrate. A great day of racing and more celebration for the Amato camp as Joe's just been named the SEMA Goodyear Driver of the Race. An emotional time and a great way to end the 1990 racing season. For Steve Evans and Don Garlitz, I'm Joel Myers. Thank you for joining us from Pomona on NBC Sports World. This has been NBC's Sports World. And today it was brought to you by Castrol GTX, engineered for today's smaller cars. By Ford Motorcraft. Get the peace of mind of doing it right with the right parts. Motorcraft quality parts. By Ford and your Ford dealer. Have you driven a Ford lately? And by Goodyear Eagle Radios, the best-selling performance radios in the world.